use these two setups to find the specific charge of an electron. The top one has an electric field and a magnetic field, and the second one has an electric field only. Okay, this is called the velocity selector, or sometimes called the cross field setup. It's called the cross field setup because you have an electric field here going from positive to negative, a uniform field, and you have a magnetic field going into the page. So it means that the electric field and the magnetic field are right angles, and they're both at right angles to the direction in which the electron is coming and moving in as well. So the electron experiences the electric force upwards because the electron is negatively charged, so it goes in the opposite direction to the electric field. The electric force can be written as Q, the charge, times the electric field strength, capital E. And if you want to find the electric field strength, you can just do the potential difference between the two plates divided by the distance between the two plates. To find the magnetic force, which is going to be downwards, and you can check that by doing Fleming's left-hand rule, you can use F equals B Q V. So if the force, two forces are balanced, then the, uh, which happens at a certain velocity, then the electron beam will go undeflected. So there's going to be a slit here which only lets this undeflected beam through. So to find that velocity, we have to make these four, two forces equal. So you get uh, Q E or Q V over D is equal to B Q lowercase v. The Q's cancel out. So you get V over B D is equal to the velocity. But this can also be written as, if you wanted, E over B. Okay, now we've found the uh, horizontal velocity. What we have here is it's going into an electric field. So if it's going into an electric field with no magnetic field, it's going to accelerate towards the positive plate. So it experiences a constant force upwards. So its initial velocity was in the horizontal direction. We call that VH for horizontal velocity. And it's, that velocity doesn't change because there's no force in that direction. So that horizontal velocity remains constant. However, its vertical velocity initially wasn't moving vertically at all and then it starts to accelerate upwards so it starts to get faster and faster in the upward direction so it's speed and then eventually it will leave at this point here so it's been deflected uh, vertically by a distance or displacement of y while it was traveling at length between the two plates the length was capital L. So the horizontal distance traveled with capital L. And we can use to figure out the acceleration using the potential difference between the two plates. So the potential difference between two plates is V and the distance between the two plates is capital D. So by the way, note that capital D and Y are different. So they, they have nothing to do with each other. However, if of course, if Y is uh, too large, then it could just hit the plate and not make it out of the electric field. So using the velocity selector, we know the velocity it's coming in at. So we call that VH. We also know it's going to accelerate upwards while horizontally its speed isn't going to change. Using this, we can figure out the specific charge. So if you notice before, it's only accelerating uh, vertically. So it's actually similar to a projectile question. So vertically, it's going to accelerate constantly. So we can use a SUVAT vertically. And horizontally, it's moving at constant velocity. So we just use S SVT. So it's upward deflection. Vertical deflection is Y from where it started. The initial upward velocity this way, well, it wasn't moving upwards at all at the beginning. So the initial upward velocity is zero. We're not interested in V, so we, we're going to ignore that one. The acceleration. So the acceleration in this electric field, we can use it by figuring out, you by firstly calculating the force, which is going to be the charge times the electric field strength. The electric field strength we can find using V over D. So this is going to be a different electric field to the one in the velocity selector. And then we can find the uh, acceleration using mass times acceleration, MA. 
So if we put this together, MA equals V, sorry, Q, V, O, D. A is equal to Q, V over M, D. Okay, time, so we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So what is the horizontal distance it travels? It travels the distance of L there. It's horizontal velocity, we said is VH, which we know. Okay, and the time we can determine by simply using velocity equals displacement over time. So in other words, uh, time will therefore equal length over VH. So length over VH here as well, the times are the same. So which SUVAT doesn't have V in it? The SUVAT without the V in it is S equals UT plus half AT squared. But because U is zero, U times T is going to be zero as well, so we can ignore that. So we have Y is equal to half times QV over MD times L over VH squared. So if we expand this, so we get half QV over MD L of VH squared squared and I'm going to rearrange this to get Q of M as a subject. So I bring the 2M, uh, sorry 2D and the VH squared to the other side so I get Y2D and the VH squared to the other side and then if we divide by the V and the L squared we get Q over M which is a specific charge left over. 